candidates will be available for our Q&A afterwards. Dennis? Thank you very much. This is a great, uh, this is a great setting and a great turnout. This is, uh, this is quite special. Um, I'm an architect. I live in McLean, Virginia. I've lived there for 20 years. Uh, as was mentioned before, I'm a special needs parent, and I'm not going to go through uh, all the information, the sort of volume information, that some of it's on the, the sheets that I handed out, some of it's on the website. I actually want to talk about some things that I've not had a chance to talk to publicly, but I have done one-on-one, -on -one because they're really the heart of uh, why I'm running in this race. <coughs> but we'll talk a little bit about uh, my time here in McLean. When my, as, as was mentioned before, um, when my boys were born 14 years ago, I decided I wanted to be a stay-at-home dad and put together this three-year plan to, to stay home. But a couple months after I started in, we discovered one of my sons had some serious health issues and significant developmental delays. And, and overnight, my wife and I became special needs parents. The three-year plan stretched out to 11 years. And in that 11 years, I learned that the word advocacy is just a nicer way of saying to fight. Because we had to fight for my son medically, we had to fight for my son's education, and we're still fighting for his future today. In 2005, I took the fight for my son to the Department of Education and the Capitol Hill. I had discovered that there was a 23-year-old law that was hurting my son. So I went and had an appointment with a Republican appointee at the Department of Education. We spoke, and after about an hour, he asked his chief of staff to leave the room so he could talk to me alone. So she left, the door closed, and he turned to me and said, look, first of all, you're right. This law is hurting your son. And I know what you're going to do, and I'm here to tell you, you're going to fail. He knew I was going to go to Congress as a single parent and try to do something about this law. But he said, I want to help you any way I can. And after I promised him that I would never use his name with what he was about to tell me, he gave me some advice. First thing he said was, and he picked his finger up and he wagged at my face, he said, first of all, don't talk to Republicans because you and your son are a problem for the Republicans. And he went on to give me names of Democrats in the House and Senate to talk to and some other things to do. <coughs> That very next week, I had an appointment to see my congressman, Frank Wolf. I went to his office, and I had an appointment to see him, but he had just left. So he missed my appointment, so I had to talk with one of his staffers. I explained to her about this 23-year-old law that was hurting my son and others like him. She said the position of Congressman Frank Wolf's office would be that if it's been law for 23 years, it must be good. <laughs> and that they would not help me. I left. Over the next few weeks, I went and saw the Democrats whose names I had been given by my friend, my new friend at the Department of Education. They said that they understood the law. They agreed that it was hurting my son and others like him. But they said it was not on their agenda, and they would not help me. They said, call Richard. So in the summer of 2005, as my friend at the Department of Education predicted, I failed. But I learned some things. I learned that I was not just there fighting for my son, I was there fighting for others as well. I learned that to fight for what is right is hard, but to fight against what is wrong is even harder. And if you care, and you can, you have to get involved because there are people who care who can't. And if you care, and if you can, and you don't, and you know what happens. Nothing changes. Right, which right will never be done, and the wrongs will prevail. <coughs> After not running for president in 2008, Colin Powell finally broke his silence about a year ago. <coughs> and he said the reason he did not run for president excuse me, <coughs> is that he did not have to ask for elective office. And he went on to say, to offer myself as a candidate requires a commitment and a passion to run the race and to succeed in the quest, the passion and commitment I do not yet have for political life. Because such a life requires a calling I do not yet hear. I do hear that calling, and I'm running for Congress. I feel passionately that we are at a moment in time 
that marks the beginning of a dramatic transformation in our country. Our convergence of what was predictable, foretold, and unexpected is now upon us. Challenges with the economy and jobs, energy, the environment, transportation here in Northern Virginia, education, and the demands that will be placed upon our families. As a, as a parent, who's, uh, as a father who stayed home for 11 years, I discovered all these little things that affect every little family differently from one another. And it's the legacy of legislation from over the years that no one is aware of at all that affects people in unintended ways. <coughs> to address all these issues, it's going to require a new understanding, new ideas, and certainly new leadership in Congress, because Washington's mentality of winning and losing is going to fail us in addressing these challenges. What I want to take to Washington is the salute, creative, solution-focused thinking, problem-solving ability, vision, and leadership that I have as an architect to the problems we face today and in our future. Now, I want to spend a few minutes, as I conclude, talking about something, and I just penned these words um, this weekend. And it's usually the question that's the 800-pound gorilla in the room. Why do you want to run against Frank Wolf? He's been there 30 years. He's repelled every challenger who's come up against him. Why do you want to do this? And there's three reasons. First, to live in a democracy requires that both sides be present and be heard. With a Republican incumbent, it falls to us and all of you as Democrats to fulfill the responsibility of democracy. We cannot step away from that responsibility or we turn our backs on the very foundation of our country. Second, if you're not in the game, you're just not in the race. You're out of hope for bringing to the country what it desperately needs, and that is leaders who will step up to the plate and tackle the most difficult problems. And third, most voters have written off Washington as being able to solve our problems and make their lives better. Indeed, they see Washington as the epicenter of the problem. Someone, someday, will come and be the voice for those, for so many who have given up on Washington. I want it to be a Democrat. I know it can be a Democrat. It should be a Democrat. And I want the many people who look at Washington with disdain today to say, finally, someone is here in Congress who gets it, who understands, and can make change really happen. And that person has to step up and really lead the change that this country needs. Frank Wolf has mastered the art of politics, but he has advocated the responsibility of leadership. His slogan for his re-election campaign this year is Wolf Works, and he lists all of these accomplishments that he has he, he's done in 30 years. And you would expect someone who's been in office for 30 years to be able to list a few, but only a few they are, if you look at them. He goes county by county, sort of area by area. And his record can be challenged. And that's what I want to do. There's a Republican state senator up in Massachusetts where I lived for, for nine years who dared to step up to the challenge for the seat held by the late Ted Kennedy. He dared to get in the game and carry the responsibility that democracy requires. And regardless of the election tomorrow, he's changed the political face of his state and for the short term for the nation. But we in the 10th Congressional District can learn a few things from our Republican foes. That there are certain steps necessary for success and to fulfill our role in a democracy. One is step up to the challenge. Two is get in the game. And three is give nothing away. Please join me, get on board, and let's take it to Frank Wolf. Thank you very much.